Dear students, now we are going to discuss UJT oscillator and its operation in detail. Let's start with the definition of UJT. UJT means Unijunction Transistor. It is a three terminal semiconductor switching device. It has three terminals base 1, base 2 and emitter and only one PN junction. Since it is having only one PN junction, it is known as Unijunction. It has three terminals. Hence, it is also referred as transistor. So, this is the structure of UJT. It consists of a lightly doped N-type semiconductor material and heavily doped P-type material which is allied closer to this B2. This is the symbol of UJT. Here, this downward arrow direction represents the flow of conventional current from this emitter to base 1. Okay. This is the equivalent circuit of this UJT. So, this UJT can be represented with this diode and two inter-base resistance that is RB1 and RB2. Okay. So, here we have to consider three important parameters to analyze the operation of UJT. Okay. So, here whenever this emitter voltage is greater than this V1. This V1 is nothing but that voltage across this RB1. So, whenever this emitter voltage is greater than that voltage across this RB1 and also the cut-in voltage of this diode, then only the UJT can start conducting the current flow. Okay. If this emitter voltage is less than the voltage across this RB1, then the UJT does not conduct. Okay. That is the operation of this UJT. Here if we want to find out the value of this V1 we can use voltage divider rule. So V1 is equal to what? VBB multiplied with the same resistance RB1 divided by the total resistance. That is the value of V1. So V1 is equal to what? The total voltage VBB multiplied with the same resistance which across we are going to find out the voltage divided by the total resistance value. Okay. So, this is the V1 value. Here we can consider this RB1 by RB1 plus RB2 is nothing but intrinsic standoff ratio. Okay. So, these parameters are very very important one. Interbase resistance RBB is equal to RB1 plus RB2. Intrinsic standoff ratio eta is equal to RB1 by RB1 plus RB2. From this we can get V1 is equal to eta into VBB. Okay. So, eta value is always in between 0.56 to 0.75. Here the voltage across RB1 is V1 is equal to eta VBB. This is an important value in this one. Okay. Here this is the characteristics of UJT. It has the peak point. This peak point is nothing but VP is equal to V1 plus VD. This is the cutting voltage of the diode. So, whenever this emitter voltage is greater than this peak voltage, then only that UJT can start conducting the current. Okay. Next applications of UJT. UJT can be used as sawtooth waveform generator, pulse generator, switching circuits and also the time and phase control circuits. Now, we are going to discuss UJT oscillator. It can also be represented as UJT relaxation oscillator or UJT sawtooth generator. Okay. This is the circuit diagram of this UJT oscillator. Okay. So, in this one, it consists of the UJT and also a capacitor. These two are very, very important components to generate the sawtooth signal. Okay. So, here... Whenever the supply voltage VBB is given to the circuit, the capacitor starts charging towards the supply voltage. That's what given here. This is the voltage across the capacitor. So, whenever supply voltage is given, the capacitor starts charging towards the VBB. Whenever this capacitance voltage exceeds the peak voltage of the UJT. As we have already discussed, the peak voltage is nothing but the voltage across the RB1 and also the voltage of the diode. Okay. So, whenever 
that voltage across the capacitance exits this peak voltage then the UJT starts conducting. If it is conducting means there is a current flow from this emitter to base 1. Correct? So at that time capacitor starts discharging. Do you all understand this point? So whenever UJT is in on condition the capacitor starts discharging. So here it is charging, here it is discharging. So here when the capacitance voltage falls below this valley point then UJT is in off condition. If the UJT is off means then the capacitance starts charging again. So this process continues to produce the sawtooth waveform. Do you all understand this one? It is very simple one. Whenever the supply is given, capacitor is charging. Whenever the capacitance voltage reaches the peak voltage, then it starts discharging because of this UJT. It is in an on condition. If it is in off condition, it starts charging. So this process continues. That's what given over here. Okay. Consist of a UJT and a capacitor which is charged through R towards VBB. Correct. When the supply voltage VBB is switched on, the voltage across the capacitor increases exponentially. Here the peak voltage of the UJT is nothing but VP is equal to eta into VBB plus VD. Consider this as the first equation. Okay. As I told you, when the capacitance voltage exceeds the peak voltage, the UJT is switched on and the capacitance voltage is discharged through emitter to base 1 and R1. So due to the design of R1, the discharge of this capacitance voltage produces a pulse across the R1 resistance. When this capacitance voltage falls below the valley voltage, UJT is switched off, then the capacitor starts charging again. Okay, so that's what given clearly over here, charging and discharging over the operation of UJT. Okay, so here the frequency of the output waveform can be changed by changing the values of resistance or capacitance because the time constant dev is equal to what? R into C. We can change any one of the values to change the frequency of the output waveform. Okay. Next, we are going to derive the frequency of oscillation for this UJT oscillator. In UJT oscillator, the charging equation of the capacitor is given as Vc of T is equal to Vb, that is the valley voltage plus the supply voltage Vbb into 1 minus E power minus T by Rc. So, this is the general charging equation of the capacitor, okay. So, here we can consider the time period at which the peak voltages occurred. So here T is equal to capital T at which we can get the peak voltage. Okay, so at that time here capacitor voltage reaches the peak voltage. So here Vp is equal to this equation can be written like this. Okay, Vb plus Vbb 1 minus E power minus capital T by Rc. Consider this as the second equation. So next we are going to compare equations 1 and 2. Both are representing the peak voltage. Okay, so here we can say eta into VBB plus VD is equal to valley voltage plus VBB into 1 minus E power minus T by RC. As we all know that the valley voltage as well as the cut-in voltage of the diode both are very very smaller one when compared with the supply voltage. These two are negligible one. So we can write this equation as eta into VBB is equal to VBB into 1 minus E power minus T by RC. Then we can cancel this voltage. Okay. Then we can get eta is equal to 1 minus E power minus T by RC. Okay. From this we can get the value of this T as we all know that F is equal to what? 1 by T. So we are going to find out the value of this T from this expression. So we have to move this value to this side and move this eta to this side. Then we can get e power minus t by rc is equal to 1 minus eta. So if, if we want to remove the exponential term, we can use this logarithmic value. But before that, we have to make sure that this exponential term is plus. So for that, what we are going to do in this step, so we are going to take the exponential term on both the sides. So 1 by e power minus t by rc is equal to 1 by 1 minus eta. 
So here 1 by e power minus becomes what? e power plus t by rc is equal to 1 by 1 minus eta. Okay. Then we can take the natural logarithmic on both the sides. We can get the value as logarithmic of 1 by 1 minus eta. Okay. So exponential and log both can cancel. Then we can get t by rc is equal to what now? Logarithmic of 1 by 1 minus eta. Then we can move this rc to this side. Now we can get t is equal to rc into logarithmic of 1 by 1 minus eta. If you want to find out the frequency, we can take the reciprocal of this time duration. So here the frequency of oscillation for this UJT oscillator is equal to 1 by t is equal to 1 by rc log of 1 by 1 minus eta. So this is very important formula by using this we can solve problems. Okay.